in the examples we've looked at so far, we keep getting something of the form capital F of X plus C. So capital F of X is some antiderivative plus that constant C to represent that infinite family of functions that could all be answers. In some cases, though, this isn't a sufficient enough answer, especially if what we're talking about are application-based problems, where what we have is a marginal cost function, and we need to get back to a cost function. Or same thing with marginal profit, and we need to generate the profit function. Having an answer with plus some arbitrary unknown constant isn't going to do much for us. So in other conditions, what we'll do is actually look at trying to solve for what that value C should be based off some initial value or some initial condition based off some additional information that we have. So in example 13, we want to find the particular antiderivative, meaning we want to solve for this value C for this function C prime equals 2x squared minus 5x. So essentially what we want to find is the function C of x given C prime of x. So to get that, we need to integrate c prime of x with respect to x, which in this case will give us 2 times x cubed over 3 minus 5 times x squared over 2 plus, again, that constant c. So just a little bit of rewriting, we get 2 thirds x cubed minus 5 halves x squared plus c. So this gives us that infinite family of functions, but we want a particular antiderivative. So the next thing we'll look at doing is using this information we have about this initial condition. We know that c of 0 equals 5,000. So that means evaluating our function c of x at 0 should give us 5,000. So what we're going to do is take this general antiderivative we have, evaluate it at 0, and set that result equal to 5,000. So 2 thirds times 0 just becomes 0. 5 halves times 0 is 0. So in this case, there's not much to solve. We just get exactly c equals 5,000, which means that our particular antiderivative, capital C of x, will be 2 thirds x cubed minus 5 halves x squared plus 5,000. So in this case, given that initial condition, this initial information about our function, make some substitutions and then solve for that value c so that we get a specific function that has this precise value rather than some arbitrary constant. We want to look at doing exactly the same thing in example 14. We want to find a particu the particular antiderivative for this derivative function for e to the t minus 8. So what we want to find is x of t, which is going to be the integral of 4 e to the t minus 8 dt. So the integral of 4 e to the t will be 4 e to the t. The integral of minus 8 will become minus 8x plus some constant c. Then again, we'll make use of this initial condition. We know that x of 0 should be equal to 2. So that means 4 e to the 0 power minus 8 times 0 plus c should be equal to 2. So 8 times 0 becomes 0. 4 times e to the first, or e to the 0, anything to the 0 power becomes 1. So we get 4 plus c equals 2, or subtracting the 4 over, we get c equals negative 2. 
So given that initial condition, we can come up with the particular antiderivative, which in this case will be 4 e to the t minus 8x plus this constant c, so plus negative 2 or minus 2.